you're working with Git, you can push and pull code. That sounds weird. When you push code, you're putting those files on the server. You're pushing it online. When you pull code, you're downloading those files. You're pulling it off the server. So a pull request is an official request to pull or merge your code. Today we're gonna to talk about the pull request process, how to write it, approve it, submit it. Let's dive in. Okay, okay, okay. If you're new to this channel, my name is Amy Dutton. I'm a web designer and developer. If you're looking at getting into this space, sometimes it's hard to know where to start or what resources to trust. I wanna help you level up and get to where you wanna be. If this sounds interesting to you, hit the subscribe button below. Git is a big part of development because it's one way that developers are able to work together. If you're not sure what Git is, how to use it, why you would wanna use it, how to get it installed on your computer, be sure to check out some of the other videos in my series, link in the card above. Before we jump into the code, terminal and GitHub, let's talk about why pull requests are important and why you might want to use one over, say, merging directly into master. When you're working on a team, a pull request allows other members of your team to review the changes that you're making. This is a critical step for maintaining the quality and consistency of your code base. Usually an admin or a code owner are the only people that can approve a pull request. If you're contributing to an open source project, a pull request allows the code owner to ensure that the changes you're making are in line with their long-term vision of the project. Even if you're working on a solo project, pull requests can still be beneficial. Lately, I've been rebuilding a selfteach.me website. It's a Gatsby site built on Netlify. And anytime I create a pull request, Netlify will automatically publish that code on a randomly generated URL. I can test the code on the server and make sure everything is working before I merge it into master. This keeps broken builds and bugs off the live site. Hopefully I've convinced you, so let's talk about what the process looks like. All my code is on GitHub, I'll show you what the process looks like, but if you're using another service like Bitbucket or GitLab, the process will be similar. Let's start with the jokes repository that we've used in other videos. I'll include a link to GitHub in the description below. We're going to add a new joke, so let's open up the terminal and create a new branch. I'm gonna type git checkout dash b new joke. So that dash b says create a new branch and we're gonna call it new joke. And since we use checkout, it moves us onto that branch. In VS Code, let's open up our knock knock jokes.txt file and we're going to add the following joke to the bottom. So I'm gonna say knock knock, who's there? Kanga. Kanga who? Actually, it's kangaroo. <laughs> so let's go back to the terminal and we want to commit it. So git add knock knock jokes dot text, git commit. Okay, now let's push this to GitHub. So I'm gonna say git remote add GitHub and we need the address for our repository. So I'm gonna copy this guy and paste him in our terminal. Here we're saying we want to add a remote repository and GitHub is the name of that remote. Most places will say origin here, but technically you can name it whatever you want. And I think it's a little easier to read and know where your code is going if you name it what it actually is. I've migrated projects before from Bitbucket to GitHub and labeling your remotes like this makes it a lot easier to know where you're pushing your code to. Let's hit enter. This line right here linked our GitHub repository, but it did not push our code online. So now I'm gonna type git push set up stream github new joke since this is the first time that we're pushing this branch to github i have to include this extra information set upstream tells git where we want to send our code github is the name of our remote that we labeled up here and new joke is the name of the branch that we want to use on github so we have our new joke branch on our local machine we'll have our new joke branch on github as well hit enter so like I said before, you don't have to include this set upstream flag every time, only the first time you push a branch. I'll show you. So in the knock knock jokes.txt file, I'm gonna add another joke. So I'm gonna say knock knock, who's there? Cactus, cactus who? Cactus makes perfect. <laughs> I'm give that a save. And now in the terminal, I'm gonna type git add, git commit, added a cactus knock knock joke. Hit enter and now I'm just gonna type git push and you'll notice it works. 
Now, if we go back to GitHub, it knows that we recently pushed code and will give us a nice notice at the top. All I need to do is just click this button, compare and pull request. Eventually this message will disappear. So let me show you another place you can go. Click on this pull requests tab at the top. You'll notice a box at the top here too, but I'm gonna click on this new pull request button. On this page, it says compare changes and lists two different branches. So we want to compare master to our new branch. On this page, it shows all the commits that were made and the differences in your final code from the master branch. This all looks good to me, so I'm gonna click on the Create Pull Request button. Now we need to give our pull request a title and a brief description. Okay, if this is a team project, you wanna bring the person reviewing your code up to speed as quickly as possible. I have a template that I use to write all my pull requests. I have a sweet little program called Text Expander that makes this really easy. With this program, you can set little text snippets and it'll expand that text. So for example, example, I can type semicolon T-H-A and I'll expand into thanks Amy. I also have snippets for my mailing address, my phone number, my website, you name it. A lot of times I'll start these snippets with a semicolon because words don't start with semicolons. In our case, I have a pull request template set up with the snippet semicolon pull. In GitHub, if I type semicolon pull, it'll expand out our pull request template. I'll include a link to text expander and a link to this template as a gist in the description below. Now the text expander piece is just a bonus. You can actually set up templates within GitHub so that when you create a new pull request, this template is already loaded in. I'll show you really quick how to do this and then we can walk through everything in the template. In the terminal, let's go back to our master branch. So git checkout master. In VS Code, I'm going to create a new file called pull request template MD and it has to be named exactly like this in order for it to work. Inside this file I'm going to add our template and save it. In the terminal I'm going to go through the same song and dance. So git add, git commit, added a PR template, git push. Now, instead of creating this PR, I'm going to click on the code tab. You'll notice that since we push directly to master, technically that's not a good practice. You'll see pull request template in our file list. This time I'm gonna click on compare and pull request button. You'll notice we didn't have to select the branches up here. GitHub recognized that automatically. And you'll see that our template is loaded in our PR. Now let's walk through everything in this template. It's written in Markdown. So if you see the double asterisk or the pound sign, that's all part of formatting. If you click on this preview tab, you can see how it's gonna look. So the first thing in our template is this Clubhouse ID. Clubhouse is a website app that you can use to manage your project and work through features. So a lot of times I'll include the story ID as part of the title. So CH for Clubhouse. If I were using GitHub issues, I'd say GH. And then I have a title for the issue. So in this case, we created a new joke. So this is perfect. Then in the template, I have the Clubhouse ID. So actually include a full link to the ticket here at the top. Then under feature description, I'll quickly summarize this feature. This may seem redundant, but remember the whole idea here is to help the person that's reviewing your PR to get up to speed as soon as possible. And they shouldn't have to click over to Clubhouse unless they really need to. Under the analysis and design section, I might include a link to the Figma file or a link out to Envision. This would be a good place to write specifics about the design implementation. Under the solution description, I'll write about how I solve the problem. Remember PRs are just as much about maintaining the code base quality and so you may want to explain your line of reasoning and why you made the change that you did. Under output screenshots, I'll upload a screenshot of what it looked like before and after I made the change. GitHub makes this really easy. I'll just put my cursor where I want the image to go and then drag and drop the screenshot onto the text box. GitHub will upload the photo and write the markdown code for me. A quick pro tip, sometimes I'll use the cloud app to create an animated GIF. This is perfect for when I'm trying to show motion or what happens when a user clicks or hovers over a button. In the address affected and insured section, 
you can list out areas of the code that might be affected by the change. If a change was only supposed to be specific to a small portion of the app, I'll include that information here. That way a reviewer will know how extensive the change is. And if they see another part of the app change, they'll know whether that was intentional or not. Okay, so under tests, I'll write any information about the tests that were added. Then was the feature tested on all browsers? This is a checklist of the different browsers supported. So you can check off these items by putting an X inside the brackets. Then in this last section, related PRs, this is helpful if we branched off of something other than master, or if there's another feature that's closely related to this one. Sometimes it's important to merge branches in a specific order to avoid merge conflicts. So you will want to document that here. Now that we made it through the entire template, I'll be the first to admit this is overkill for adding our two tiny little jokes to our repo. But for real projects, this is incredibly helpful. I'll start with this template and then delete the sections that I don't need. Here, I'm going to delete everything except the feature description and the address affected and insured. Under feature description, let's add added two knock knock jokes. And under affected and insured, we wanna say changes only affected the knock knock jokes text file, perfect. Now let's click the create pull request button. And on the right side here, you'll notice a few options. These are GitHub specific. You can add someone as a reviewer and this will flag that person to review your code. You can assign this PR to someone and this should be the person that will ultimately merge and close the PR. You can assign labels to a PR. A few projects I've worked on use a review label when you want to flag it as needing reviewed or a WIP, W-I-P for work in progress. This is great if your code is not ready to be reviewed or if you wanna open up a conversation about the direction that you're taking your feature. And yes, that means that code doesn't have to be finalized in order for you to open a pull request. You can also associate your PR with a project or a milestone. You can link your PR to issues if you're using GitHub's issue system. I've mentioned several times that pull requests are a great way to maintain code quality. And one way to do that is through code review and you can do that directly within GitHub. Okay, so I'm gonna click on the files changed tab and this will show you all the code that has changed within our PR. As you can imagine, this page would get awfully long if you made a ton of changes all at once. That's one reason why it's a good idea to keep your PR small. It's easier to review small changes than to adopt a large code overhaul all at once. Ideally, when you submit a PR, someone from your team will come to this page to review your code. You'll notice I can click next to the line number to make a comment about a specific line of code, or I can click and drag to make a comment about a block of code. I can also click on this start review button to officially start the review process. After I've viewed a file, you can also click on this view to checkbox. That'll collapse the file and it makes this page a little bit easier to process when you're looking at multiple files. Then when I'm done, I can click on the finish your review button and you can comment on the code as a whole. You'll also notice I can approve or request changes, pretty cool. Obviously, I would never review my own code. That's kind of dumb since I wrote it, but you kind of get an idea of how these tools work within a team. You'll notice GitHub won't even let me approve my own PR. I'm going to the Conversations tab. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down, and GitHub knows that it can merge my code without any conflicts. So I can go ahead and merge this pull request. Confirm. Now that it's been merged, you'll want to do a little housekeeping and delete the branch. You're not losing anything, all that information is stored within the history of the PR. Okay, now if we go back to the code tab and click on the knock knock jokes file, you'll see our new jokes are included. Done, done, done. One second, I'm almost done, I promise. Give me just one second. All the code within this video is posted on GitHub. Feel free to download it, use it, modify it, whatever you need, have at it. If you like this video and want to see more videos on web design and development, hit the subscribe button below. Hit the bell icon if you want to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Until then, keep coding.